Good evening, everyone. The Florida Department of Transportation welcomes you to the State Road 426 Coalition Community Event. My name is Jesse Bluin, and I'm the project manager with FDOT. We really thank you for joining us today. During the community event, we will present information on FDOT's plans to improve safety and enhance operations on State Road 426. We encourage your feedback, and during tonight's event, we will provide multiple ways that you can submit your questions and comments. All questions uh, will be responded to after the meeting and will become part of the public record. I will now turn it over to the team to begin the presentation. This event is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This event is being conducted in person, virtually through GoToWebinar, and over the phone. If you dialed in today on a telephone line, the presentation is available on the project webpage at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 451282-1. The purpose of tonight's community event is to explain the project needs and present FDOT's recommended improvements to help meet the project needs and obtain community feedback about the proposed improvements. This community event was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with the state and federal requirements including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Melissa McKinney, District 5, Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, DeLand, Florida, 32720-6834. By phone at 386-943-5077. Or by email at melissa.mckinnewy at dot.state.fl.us. You may also contact Stefan Kulikowski, State Title VI Coordinator, Equal Employment Office, by mail at 605 Suwanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, or by phone at 850-414-4764, or email at stefan.com. K U L A K O W S K I at D O T dot S T A T E dot F L dot U S. This information is shown on a sign at the in person location, on the project website, and in the meeting notifications. The community event was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register on FDOT's public notices website in the local newspaper, on the project webpage, and via a press release. In addition, a grassroots effort was made to notify the community at large about this event. Let's talk about what a coalition is. Coalitions are formed to evaluate transportation solutions and develop concepts for potential improvements that can be incorporated into roadway maintenance projects. Coalitions are community-centric and engage the local community in developing solutions. This coalition is studying the State Road 426 corridor to identify issues and develop potential solutions that enhance safety for all users. Most importantly, this coalition provides the ability to implement safety improvements as part of a programmed maintenance project. Another major benefit of this coalition is that the design and construction are already funded. The Coalition is a partnership with our community stakeholders. With this in mind, a project visioning team was formed, which includes four key government partners, the City of Winter Park, Metro Plan Orlando, Lynx, and Orange County. There are also numerous community partners along the corridor that are involved with this project and are providing important community input. 
We also want to hear from you, the public, whether you live, work, learn, or visit this corridor. Your input is important to the successful outcome of this coalition. FDOT is conducting a maintenance project for the segment of State Road 426 from west of South Park Avenue to east of North Lakemont Avenue, a distance of approximately 1.7 miles. Maintenance projects provide FDOT an opportunity to resurface a roadway and make safety improvements. As part of this effort, a coalition has been formed to identify improvements that can be incorporated into this maintenance project, with the goal of improving safety for all users. The State Road 426 Coalition is studying this corridor to identify issues and solutions with a focus on engaging the local community. The goal of this maintenance project is to rehabilitate the pavement while incorporating proposed improvements that can be implemented within the existing right-of-way. The State Road 426 Coalition is evaluating a variety of factors, including safety, pedestrian and bicycle mobility, speed management, and traffic operations. The project is an important step to improve safety along the corridor, reduce vehicle speeds, and improve traffic flow. The goal of this coalition is to incorporate improvements that will provide for safe travel along the corridor for all users. Improving safety is the focus for the State Road 426 corridor. FDOT has adopted Target Zero, which builds upon the Vision Zero principles. By focusing on influencing dangerous driver behaviors before serious and fatal crashes. The project team conducted safety and traffic analysis for State Road 426. The statistics on this slide highlight the critical factors. For the period between January of 2017 and August of 2022, there were a total of 629 crashes on the corridor. As shown in the pie chart, the top three most frequently occurring crashes are rear-end crashes at 48%, side swipes at 19%, and left turn crashes at 11%. Additionally, 32% of crashes resulted in injuries, including two fatalities. Other key facts in this infographic show that only 20% of crashes occurred at night, and 83% of the time the roads were dry. 26% of crashes involved cars departing from their lanes, and a high 40% of crashes involved distracted drivers. Through our proposed improvements, we have identified countermeasures to improve safety on the State Road 426 corridor. Speeding is a key issue on this corridor. Speed monitoring devices are located between the Southern Curve and Brewer's Curve, and the data collected indicates that drivers are regularly traveling 10 to 15 miles faster than the posted speed limit. Through the curves, the posted speed limit is 25 miles per hour. The average recorded speed is over 34 miles per hour. Additionally, the 85 percentile speed is even higher at 39 miles per hour. 15% of drivers are traveling over 39 miles per hour, or almost 15 miles per hour over the posted speed limit. Key issues were identified along the corridor through field reviews, data analysis, and via community input. Some of these issues include long wait times at signals, difficulty turning into and out of driveways and side streets, lane departures, and a lack of crossings for bicyclists and pedestrians. To improve the State Road 426 corridor, the Federal Highway Administration's safe system approach is being applied. This approach places safety first and foremost in the prioritization of roadway improvements. It aims to improve drivers' behaviors and promotes the reduction of crashes through the incorporation of engineering and speed management elements. The goals for this corridor include improving corridor safety for all users, promoting the reduction of vehicle traveling speeds, improving multimodal access and connections for bicyclists and pedestrians, and reducing crashes. The team's extensive analysis resulted in many different opportunities to improve safety along the corridor. In addition to achieve the coalition goals, the team developed a toolkit of nearly 30 types of improvements that can be applied to the appropriate locations along the State Road 426 corridor. The toolkit includes improvements in four key areas. 
traffic calming and speed reduction, improving safety through the curves, multimodal improvements for bicyclists and pedestrians, and provide safer turning movements. Several of the potential improvements that address traffic calming and the reduction of speeds include narrowing lanes, pavement markings, sliver medians, and raised intersections. Examples of curve safety improvements include angled line markings in the pavement, internally illuminated reflective pavement markers, a barrier wall to separate the pedestrians from the vehicles, and dynamic chevron signs. Bicycle, pedestrian, and transit travel can be improved through raised crosswalks at intersections or mid-block, high visibility crosswalk markings, pedestrian hybrid beacons, painting bus stop stations in the outside lanes, and installing pedestrian barrier walls. In order to achieve these safer turning movements, improvements could include tightening the curb returns, raising the intersections, retiming the traffic signals, and increasing the length of left turning lanes. The alternatives shown here tonight were developed based on a partnership with the community and key stakeholders. Using the toolkit of improvements described previously and the Coalition's community-centric approach, two alternatives were developed to meet the project needs. The project needs include improving safety, reducing speeds, improving multimodal connectivity and mobility, and reducing crashes. Alternatives 1 and 2 provide a menu of improvements. After listening to community input and working with key agency partners, the most effective elements from each alternative will be selected and combined into a recommended alternative that best meets the community's needs. As we look at Alternative 1, shown on this slide, you will see that many of the features are vertical in nature, with the goal of slowing speeds and changing driver behavior. These include raised intersections, raised crosswalks, medians, and a barrier to separate pedestrians from travel lanes. This alternative also includes a roundabout at Chase Avenue, as well as an additional southbound turn lane at North Lakemont Avenue, both of which require additional right-of-way and would be longer-term improvements. Similar to Alternative 1, Alternative 2 provides improvements that address the project needs with a focus on safety. Many of the features of Alternative 2 are horizontal in nature with the goal of slowing speeds and changing driver behavior. These include adding a gentle curvature to the roadway, also known as chicaning, tightening curb returns, adding additional lane markings, and improving the intersections. This alternative also includes an additional southbound turn lane at North Lakemont Avenue, which requires additional right-of-way and would be a longer-term improvement. As previously mentioned, following the community event, a recommended alternative will be developed that incorporates the most effective design elements from Alternatives 1 and 2 into a single recommended alternative. This recommended alternative will then move forward into the design phase and ultimately the construction phase. Now let's look at some conceptual renderings of the proposed improvements that could be implemented along the corridor. The following series of slides shows the current conditions of key locations along the corridor. The images on the left side of the screen depict the existing condition, while the images on the right side of the screen show potential proposed improvements. The concepts depicted in the renderings are draft and are subject to change. Depicted here are the before and after images of State Road 426, looking east towards Hankel Circle. In this location, raised crosswalks with pedestrian hybrid beacons is proposed. While the raised crosswalk with pedestrian hybrid beacons shown here is at Hankel Circle, this option is being proposed at several locations along the corridor. This image shows cars traveling eastbound approaching the southern curve. Proposed improvements include a narrow median through the curve to keep vehicles from departing their lanes, dynamic chevron signs, as well as adding a pedestrian wall between the vehicular lanes and the sidewalk. This image shows cars traveling westbound approaching Brewer's Curve. Proposed improvements include a narrow median through the curve to keep vehicles from departing their lanes, as well as adding a pedestrian wall between the vehicular lanes and the sidewalk.
At Shepherd Avenue, proposed improvements include a raised intersection, high-emphasis raised crosswalks, and in-pavement speed warning markings. This example highlights Shepherd Avenue, but similar treatments are proposed at other intersection locations along the corridor. In this final rendering, we are focusing on improvements to Phelps Avenue. The existing intersection has the highest number of crashes on the corridor. Several improvements are recommended at this location, including new left turn lanes from State Road 426 onto Phelps Avenue, a raised intersection with high visibility crosswalks, bus stop markings, and advanced speed markings. Let's now look at the schedule. This coalition is ongoing and is anticipated to be completed in late summer of 2023. Following completion of the coalition, the recommended alternative will move into design, which is set to begin in late 2023. Construction of the project is currently planned to begin in the summer of 2025. We encourage your input and feedback about this project, and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public record, and every method for providing comments and questions carries equal weight. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by June 23, 2023, 10 days after the community event, will become part of the project's public record. All questions will be responded to in writing following the meeting. In-person attendees are encouraged to speak with project team members to ask questions and provide input. To submit a comment for the public record, please complete a printed comment form and return it to project staff. You may also contact the project manager, Jesse Bluen, directly by email at jesse bluin at dot dot S-T-A-T-E dot F-L dot U-S or by U.S. mail at the Florida Department of Transportation, 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, DeLand, Florida, 32720. You may also call the project manager at 386-943-5167 to provide verbal comments during normal business hours. To learn more about this project, go to www.cflroads.com. Type the project number 451282-1 in the search box at the top right and click Go. Then click on the project name. Community event materials are posted on the website now. On behalf of the Florida Department of Transportation, thank you for attending this community event and providing your input on this project. If you have comments or questions after the meeting, please submit them by June 23, 2023. Contact information, this presentation, project documents, and other exhibits displayed at the community event are posted on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash P R O J E C T forward slash four five one two eight two dash one. Thank you and have a good evening. This concludes the presentation. We now invite you to review the event materials and exhibits and talk to the project team members. The presentation will begin again in a few moments.